this is what's in your neck of the woods. Uh, this is our little Zoom table ID session that we do each month. Uh, people are, can send in mushrooms that you find during the month. And uh, I'll, you should have seen an email about it. I'll, I usually send out another. Um, we did recently have a, a virtual foray, which turned out pretty good. I did post the video of it on, the, uh, on our YouTube page, if you want to check that out. <clears throat> Okay, so let's just jump right in here. Um, so our first mushroom here is a little white thing. You'd probably find these in your yard. Whoops. Um, uh, and this was submitted by uh, Douglas Miller. He found it in Baltimore County. You can see he's got a ring cap grown in a yard or a field or something along those lines. Um, and upon further examination, you'll see it's got these chocolatey colored gills that should have been white turn into pink turning into this chocolate brown as the spores matured um, similar to your store-bought agaricus mushrooms your button mushrooms this is most likely an agaricus campestris some of our our field mushrooms um, they are good edibles you want to know what you're doing though <clears throat> and this is a a good example of, of making sure you pay attention. So this was submitted by John Harper. <clears throat> the mushrooms along the top here can look very similar. They tend to have more of a yellowish buff cap, but sometimes your agaricus campestris can have a little dark on the cap. Um, a couple of things that you can look for is the agaricus are gonna have free gills. So that means that the gills are not going to attach to the stipe. Uh, did I say the agaricus? The agaricus do not attach to the stipe. The stropharia, which is what this is, stropharia coronilla, actually attached to the stipe. And in this image over here, this is a close up of the ring that's left on the stem. And you can see these little lines. These are actually where the gills were sitting on, you know, on the ring protecting it before it opened up. It's very common for this to have this and as the spores are produced they drop off and a lot of times you'll get dark ridges along there. Um, anyway, this, this mushroom can upset your stomach pretty bad. Um, you can see this one down here. I think this might actually be an agaricus. It looks like it's trying to go to that more pink to the chocolatey color whereas the stropharia tend to go to a gray, purplish gray color. Um, so anyway, that's something to be aware of if you do plan on uh, collecting some agaricus campestris for the table. All right, our next mushroom is submitted by Gordon Callahan, found in his yard. His yard is mixed with woods. I think he said this was a little pear tree right there. You can see them down here, some little brownish looking mushrooms here. And when we get a little closer, um, it's a bolete. There's no reticulation. There might be a little bit at the top. Um, it, it looks like it's getting some of that purple coloration. So this one's pretty brown, kind of hard to call, um, but it does look like I keep clicking away here. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm trying to move this. There we go. My video goes all over. Anyway, um, so this was probably a more of a purple coloration when it was younger. So I'm I'm putting this as possibly something like a Tylopolis Columbia violaceus. Gordon actually is one of the people who, a uh, few people who don't have the bitter gene, so he can't taste bitter to tell me if this was actually bitter. Um, I'm, I believe it probably was. Uh, someone else had sent me another Tylopolis Plumbia violaceus. This is a younger version. You can see how this, a lot of times when it's younger, it's gonna be more purple and more purple in the stipe. Um, and as it ages, you can have this color change where it goes to this kind of tan, tan brown color. Um, okay. Moving on, uh, so this was submitted by Bertie Niner. She found this in Montgomery County under some oak trees. 
Um, I think you guys might be able to speculate at least that, that it's a bolete. Um, there are quite a few of these dark capped, a lot of times they'll have dark stipe. Um, and I just wanted to mention that you see this, this cap cracking, I mean the stipe cap cracking away right here. This is fairly common when you've got changes in conditions when you, you know, it dries out a little bit and then all of a sudden it rains a lot and they get a lot of water that starts flooding those cells and some of the um, cells are able to expand and others aren't. And so you get this cracking in the stipe. Sometimes they'll split away in pieces. Um, so anyway, this is, I'm not too sure about my ID on this one. Um, she said it was not bitter and she didn't mention any staining or bruising on the gill, on the pores here, which is unusual to me um, because most of these will have that. So anyway, I threw on Tylopus ferruginius, but I am not certain that that's what that is. There's quite a few of these. Some, you know, there's Battius, there's Batisep, there's a lot of these little Tylopolis, but usually they have brown staining. Um, and it's kind of hard to, to figure out which ones they are. Plus, bolets are not my strong suit. So, okay, we'll move on from there. Ah, this one is really cool to me anyway. So this was submitted by Stella Waldman. Uh, she found those in North Bethesda. Now, they look like um, amanitas. Uh, I, I'm sure if you've been in some of these meetings, you've seen some of these Lepidella's style amanitas. Um, they've got these shaggy, they're all white, they got free gills. This one even has like a shaggy stipe and all these remnants around the edges. Um, so the, the thing about this one though is, and I asked her, I said, is, was there any trees around? She said, no, these were like in the middle of a field. Now I know that roots can go quite a long way. So, you know, this is a little speculation, but I believe this is actually Amanita thersii, um, which is a saprotrophic Amanita. So it's not mycorrhizal, which, which in general, Amanitas are mycorrhizal. They have an association with the roots of trees, um, but there are some that are splitting off and they might be changing the name to some of these to sapro Amanita. Um, I asked her if she could get some dried and we could throw this into our uh, mycoflora sequencing project, but the lawn mowers had gone by the park or the field and they had mowed them all. So she said she'd keep an eye on it, on it and see if she sees any, else, any more come up and uh, maybe we'll get one of these sequenced and see if I'm actually calling that right. Anyway, I thought that one was really cool. Okay, and so uh, Zachary was talking about the Caesars um, in Thailand. We've had other Caesars in previous months. This was submitted by Jim Ball. I just wanted to throw this in there because this is actually not a Caesar, but it's something that could possibly look like an American Caesar. Um, Caesars tend, to, um, I'm gonna start pointing. I need to remember that it's the mouse. <laughs> um, so this is the remnants of the universal veil. For the actual um, Caesar mushrooms, the veil is membranous and it's gonna stay at the bottom and create a, a vulva sac down at the bottom, kind of like a little cracked open egg. Um, if you remember the picture Zachary had, they had, they had some of those in there. Um, this one does not leave many, much remnants at the bottom because they're broken up on the cap. They can get washed off in rainy conditions and things like that. Um, it also doesn't have as much of the orange patterns as you see on the stipe as you can see on the American Caesars. And one main thing is looking up here by the gills, there is no partial veil on this, um, which uh, would definitely be present, present in, a, uh, in one of the American Caesars. This is uh, Amanita parsivolveda. All right. So another cool one to me, anyway, this is submitted by Agnes Demiansky. Uh, this is, she found this in Shenandoah. It kind of looks like a, maybe a little nondescript little brown bit growing on some wood. 
Um, and, but when you flip it over, the spores are being produced on little teeth. She also said that they felt like gummy bears. So they were real, they're, they're actually a jelly fungi instead of some of your normal cap and, uh, cap and stem mushrooms that you see. Um, this is Pseudohydnum gelatinosum. I've only found this uh, maybe once before, maybe once or twice. And these, are, these typically grow from conifer. Um, so she was probably around some, uh, some, uh, some sort of conifer trees there. Very cool. Speaking of jellies, this was submitted by Nieves Santos, found on, I'm guessing it's a picnic table, and you can see they're pretty tiny. Um, the caps are smaller than a screw head. Um, and if you zoom in, you'll see they are uh, kind of spatula shaped. Uh, we found these, uh, there's some couple of picnic tables at uh, Sequinota, and seems like almost every year we've been going back They've been popping back up. This is a Dacropinax bathyllaria. It's one of those little orange jelly fungi. It's different, you know, you can separate it from um, Dacromyces palmatus, just gets spatula type shape. Um, okay, so here's another, another neighborhood submitted by Bertie Niner, found growing uh, from, she said it was a box elder maple which I'm not sure what that is, but that's what she had said. Um, and I think a lot of you guys might have seen these out in the woods. If you've been out hunting, they're very common. Uh, when you're looking for morels and, you know, you might be unfortunate finding morels, but if you do find this, it is actually an edible mushroom. It's fairly easy to identify. It's a type of polypore. Um, I usually see it early in the spring, and then sometimes you'll see them fruiting again in the fall. I guess it's been wet enough where this one just said, Phew, I'm ready to go, and you know, popped out on this tree. Um, it's got, uh, she did mention it, it also has that very particular smell. I always like letting people smell this mushroom and see what they think it smells like. Um, I find it smells a bit like watermelon rind, and some people say cucumber. Um, but uh, this is Cereoporus squamosus. It used to be pol um, polyporous, and they've moved a, a, a group of polypores into Cereoporus. Um, common names, Dryad Saddle, uh, Pheasant Back also. The, uh, okay, so this one's submitted by Jennifer Hoyer, found in Oak Woods. Um, if you haven't been in the woods, um, or if you have been in the woods, I've I all can almost guarantee you've seen this because this mushroom right now is going bonkers or at least a week ago last last weekend I went out and this was the most prominent mushroom in the woods um, I thought it was kind of funny she, uh, she described it as looking like a, a partially burnt marshmallow popping through the <laughs> it's like okay I could see the toasted marshmallow thing going on there um, it's got some fairly distinct features. It's a it's fairly firm. It's a fairly firm mushroom, but if you were to to really put a little pressure on it, it would snap like chalk, which would kind of bring you to the rustulas and the lactaria. Uh, you can see she's uh, kind of scraped this here, the gills, and it's turning this brownish color. Cap as well. Um, very. That's it, you know they all it bruises brownish, like a reddish brown, like that. Um, it has a fairly fishy aroma, and as you get older, they get really bad. Um, not a big fan of smelling this mushroom, but it, it is everywhere right now, which was kind of interesting in its own, you know, right. But unfortunately, it's not one of those good edibles. Uh, this is Russula compacta. I actually have them growing in the front yard right now, so they're, they're going bonkers right now. And I think this is one of the last ones. Uh, this, uh, I had two different submissions for the same. So Agnes and Tom McCoy sub both submitted this one. And this is rock tripe, which is actually a lichen. Um, this is Umbilicaria mammulata. And if you have seen the sporophore, 
it's uh, first page. So uh, you, if you want more information on this lichen, you can check out the spore for, and there's a big article in there right now. All right, thanks for everybody for participating. Uh, this was a nice collage that Jennifer Hoyer submitted. It was beautiful, lots of cool mushrooms. Um, anyway, thanks everybody.